a little bit later in the show, but uh, let's just go ahead and start it now with uh, from Guahan uh, Academy Charter School. We have um, the former speaker, uh, Judy Wampat. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Dennis, thank you so much. Good uh, morning. Right. So uh, I guess what was your initial reaction to uh, the governor's announcement on Friday? Well, actually, I, I kind of expected it when I was, you know, monitoring what was going on every day, the, the rise of infection. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, my God. <coughs> Not just with uh, children, but, you know, faculty and staff. And that, of course, was worrisome uh, for me. We were very fortunate, knock on wood, that, you know, I, we, that didn't happen to us. But I know the <coughs> eventuality of it actually happening, um, you know, is highly uh, probable. So. Uh, I mean, I, I understand a lot of people kind of were upset about it, and uh, but I'm, I've always my I've always said to everyone on the staff is that you know the health and safety, you know, for children, faculty, and staff, you know, are my top priority, and you know we were we were actually it happened just before I was supposed to meet with the leadership team to uh, make some changes um, in terms of you know our schedule and how we were going to deliver uh, instruction, but more importantly is how are we going to keep our children, you know, socially distanced from each other. And it's really difficult. It was a challenge for us because children were just so happy to come to school. They were happy to see their friends. Uh, and even though I had everyone out there trying to monitor, we constantly, you know, reminding them to social distance. I will have to admit that, that our children were really good about their face masks, you know, maybe one or two I would I would find walking around and, you know, and they they quickly would respond and put them back on. And but it's it's just the social distancing that I found uh, to be troublesome. Uh, we actually had the children eat like for example the elementary kids uh, we have them eat breakfast in their classrooms, so the staff will bring the the, the meals uh, to them. And because their lunches are staggered, it worked out really well where they went into the cafeteria and everything was prepackaged. So therefore, all they have to do is pick it up, uh, sit on the cafeteria table where we have some sneeze guards on them, uh, eat, and then of course, you know, um, go out. The bigger groups were a little bit harder. Uh, although they were not, uh, you know, big eaters uh, and were not going to the cafeteria to eat. I don't know <clears throat> what uh, the reason for that is. I mean, sometimes, you know, how kids are, they either carry their own snacks in their bags or don't want to be seen uh, eating, by, you know, eating cafeteria food. Uh, so they, they want to stay out. They want to stay out and to socialize. And, and that, of course, course, you know, became a problem. I, although I placed, uh, we have what we call, we call um, schools within a school. That means uh, the middle schools would be in one building, elementary in, in a separate building, and then the high school in the, another building. And they were separated or out in the same time, but separated, but still uh, our facility is not adequate, you know, to have about 300 kids out in the field and especially now uh, with the monsoon season it has really gotten uh, pretty bad all of their canopies are out to shelter the children to either eat out there or you know be outside but it's just inadequate you know right. um, so that's what we were facing with and we're going to be meeting this morning at nine uh, primarily so that then you know because th there has to be a different, you know, alternative, of course, in terms of what can we do to really keep our children, you know, safe right. and healthy. So what what's going to happen? Because we're seeing just like case by case, school to school, uh, GDOE, they're doing a, a week of um, staff development and they're uh, migrating uh, to online starting, I believe, on Tuesday. Um, Catholic schools, some starting as early as today. Uh, yeah, so it's very, so what's the situation with Guan Academy Charter School? Well, with us, of course, is that uh, what we did, we took our entire population at the time, and we looked at, we did an inventory of the number of iPads that we have in Chromebooks, and then for the first ESF one, 
I put I put in a request for the remaining numbers to try to get one per you know a device per child, and so we we once uh, you know we realized how many we had on hand, and at, at that time we were still short about three hundred. Mm -hmm. So we knew then we couldn't place everyone uh, on um, online. <clears throat> we also knew that there are parents who did not have the connectivity at home. And so, you know, they, they couldn't participate. And, and it wasn't until um, the late, I mean, early part of this year that the MyFi's were finally uh, made available for us to now give to our children. So the shortness of devices and then now with the MyFi's, of course, we couldn't, we couldn't go 100% uh, online. So what we had was the three modes of instruction. We had the um, FaceTime, we had the, the online, and then we had the hard copies. And we realized that that was really very difficult to ask, you know, any teacher really to have to do three. So then we switched over to uh, FaceTime only, and, and FaceTime and uh, online and we phased out the hard copies when we started giving out devices and my five. So that is definitely one of the things we want to talk about again this this uh, this week. And the surveys that have gone out to our parents originally when we were going to go 100% FaceTime, that there were still a number of parents who still didn't want to do that. They wanted uh, online. And uh, and I you know I'm, at that time we couldn't do it because we only had three I mean thirty uh, requests for online out of the seven hundred and sixty seventy students so you know, it it did not make you know any um, uh, economical sense and even hiring one teacher to do it for a spread of K to twelve students so mm. it was just it wasn't feasible and practical for us to do. So, so we did the face-to-face. -face. So as of today, though, now that the governor's executive order is out, uh, has GAX already transitioned to online learning or you're you're not able to because you still need to get more iPads? We're, yeah, no, we're, we're not. Uh, no, we finally got the, the iPad and we have the letters also from DOE to issue out the MyFi. Okay. So what we're doing this week is that because I... I have a, you know, so many, a number of teachers who are new to the system and uh, we have new uh, TAs as well. So those are the individuals who are going to have to train this week to get them ready to be able to do online uh, teaching. So we will uh, start the same date as uh, GDOE, which is September 7th. So we're going to be working on exactly, you know, um, uh, when we're going to who are going to train, retrain, uh, contact parents to come and pick up the devices, contact parents to pick up the MyFives and then take them out to it and &E and pick up the MyFive. Right Set up the children's, of course, password, emails, all that. And uh, so right now the teachers are planning because we're going to start at least this Friday because we're not going, because they won't be in this week is to give them now this is only short term hard copies just so that they wouldn't lose any instructional time before we go uh 100 online at least for the time that the governor has said that they needed to to monitor uh before you know further decisions will be made about you know what type what, of was there a time face to face I'm was, sorry? was there a time provided uh judy to you guys because I, I don't know the eo just said temporarily suspend or, or so we're going You're right. Well, when when we spoke uh, with her, because she did call uh, us, uh, the, the leaders of the uh, uh, private schools and charter schools together, because she met separately with GDOE, uh, the question was asked, uh, you know, how much time are we looking at? And it was basically between like two to three weeks to kind of monitor. Uh, I know it's, it, it sounds almost kind of ridiculous for us to do virtual for two weeks and yeah. then we go back to face to face, but I don't believe that that's the situation I think is just to monitor the numbers and then uh, you know have the numbers drive exactly what you know the policy will be right but then at the end of the day the benefit is that if you're able to stand up this online I mean this goes for all the schools to kind of reacquaint ourselves and then you know train all the new people on it 
then whatever happens after this two to three weeks, if we come back to this juncture again, then we're able to really pivot much more quickly and hopefully lose less instructional time. Yes, but, but you know, I mean, we're really going to discuss that today because I don't want us to go from one mode of learning to another mode. We're going to go back and forth every time the numbers, you know, go up. Mm. I That once, whatever decision we're going to be making today, that should, I'm hoping that that will be a decision that would then remain for the rest of the school year, yeah. where there is half here only face-to-face uh, -face and the other half will be online. Wow. Just to alleviate the class load, because you mm -hmm. did you did say the social distancing. Yeah. God, I heard so much stuff from staff of the school that um, about how difficult, almost impossible, was what I heard from one uh, aide. Bree, yeah. it, it it really is. And even though I was having the non-instructional staff out there, we had appealed to, of course, our teachers, asking them, you know, uh, can you please come out and, and help us monitor the <laughs> children at the beachway and in the yard. And they've been really good at you know at it because everybody's concerned. Right on, uh, Judy. Before we let you go, because uh, I know you got some students out there. This isn't a vacation. So, What's your message to the students at Guan Academy Charter School? Is that you know wait uh, contact or rather wait for your teachers to communicate with you via you know Ren Web through the parent portal, uh, emails of course, and phone calls. So they are teachers are all now reaching out to the parents and students. And, you know, and take you know this uh, opportunity to uh, brush up on what you know you need to do to stay stay healthy that we've been teaching you. So, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you. Thanks, speaker. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yes, Bye. Uh, okay. Bye. Uh, it is eight oh seven. Let's go right into the KUAM uh, news Zoom room.